of St. Alphonsus Parish as we gather together and as we continue to celebrate God's life and love present in our midst. Today we celebrate as a Universal Church Good Shepherd Sunday. It's also the Sunday that we celebrate World Day of Vocations. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter, the third Sunday since the Feast of Divine Mercy, and the seventh or eighth uh, Sunday that we've spent uh, social distancing in place. All of that is part of our experience. All of that is what we bring together as we celebrate today. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Continuing to count on the presence of the dynamic Spirit of God at work among his people, we become aware of God's life and love present in our lives, calling us to prayer and calling us together to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made, made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other disciples, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. <laughs> Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, the sheep hear his voice. And the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal, to slaughter, and to destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray, Pray to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Thank you. 
one of the gifts, uh, one of the privileges of being the leader of the assembly when we gather together to celebrate the Eucharist is the perspective that you have as the celebrant. And this perspective is not the this perspective of the people looking at the altar. Uh, the perspective is rather the celebrant looking at the people. It's a very important uh, perspective and a, I believe a, a very necessary perspective. It's important and necessary because first of all, as celebrant, it reminds you from where you came. You did not just suddenly appear standing before the people of God at the altar. You were called forth uh, from the people of God. It reminds you also of who you serve and why you serve and why you are enabled as celebrant and as priest. It is not something just for yourself. In fact, it makes little or no sense for yourself. It only makes sense within the context of community, within the context of a worshiping community that gathers together. And the longer that you become the celebrant and the longer that you are the priest, you understand that it is the people of God who because of their stories, their lives, their joys, their sufferings, their questions, their life journeys that keep you on the straight and narrow path. It's very, very difficult to not be humbled, to not be generous, to not be compassionate when you are in relationship with others. It's not so difficult when you're isolated. But when you're part of a community, when you're part of a worshiping community, you are aware and you are connected to the struggles of the community, the life the community lives, and the faith that they profess. As a priest celebrant, the longer that you are stationed in a particular community, the more and more you become connected to that community. For myself, when I think of St. Alphonsus, the St. Alphonsus that I remember the most is the St. Alphonsus when I was a young child, because that was my experience until recently of St. Alphonsus. It's changing, and it's a great gift that it is changing. But when I think of communities that I've served for a very long time and I stand before the altar and I look out to the community that gathers, it is so easy to recall for me in places such as the Church of Our Lady of the Desert in Tucson or Santa Catalina or even more recently St. Gerard Magella in Brooklyn Park to see the people of God, to understand who they are to listen to their needs and to bring that experience to the celebration of the Eucharist. I've never understood priests who do not believe that they are connected with the people of God, who believe that they are somehow set apart, that they're disconnected. It makes no sense. It just doesn't make sense to me. And it doesn't make sense, especially on a day like today, when we celebrate the Feast of the Good Shepherd. Because when we celebrate the Feast of the Good Shepherd, we celebrate the role of Jesus as shepherd, but we also celebrate the role of those of us who are called forth from the people of God to share in that role. I'm reminded of what Pope Francis said. He has a way of saying things, even on days that are extremely important, that cuts through all of the ceremony, that cuts through all of the trappings, that cuts through all of the drama and makes it very, very real. And on this particular day, it was an event that took place in Rome on the feast of Peter and Paul, 
the normal yearly gathering of all those archbishops who have been placed in charge of metropolitan sees. In other words, they're now in charge of not only their own archdiocese, but also a cluster of dioceses. They're gathered together to receive from Francis a new symbol that they wear, the pallium. And the pallium is made out of wool, and it is to remind them that they are a shepherd, that they're called to service, not called to administration, not called to judgment, but to service. And on this particular day, what Francis reminded them is that if you are going to be a real shepherd, if you are going to be really connected with those whom you are called to serve, you will smell like the sheep. You will smell like them because you are one of them. You will not be so separate, so set apart, so cough, so isolated that you don't know them. Because if you do, something is terribly, terribly wrong. You will smell like them because you are one of them. I was thinking about that when I was thinking about Jesus as he identified himself for his people this day as the Good Shepherd. And they knew him as the Good Shepherd. For them, it was not just a biblical idea or some wonderful feast day that would be celebrated again and again and again. For the people who lived with Jesus, who walked with Jesus, who worked with Jesus, who suffered with Jesus, who believed with Jesus, they understood that he was one of them. That his dreams were their dreams. His hopes were their hopes. His sufferings were their sufferings. He smelled like them. And because they knew he was authentic, that he was not the thief that broke in, but rather the true shepherd, they were able to follow him. And I think also the gospel points out that they gave him a wonderful gift. It's a gift that is so very, very important. And I think it's a gift that those who feel that they are called to be shepherds today must use or at least are invited to use as a measuring stick to let them know in their part of themselves that is open to the truth whether or not they are truly a shepherd. And in the gospel it tells us Jesus is a shepherd because the people listen to his voice and recognize his voice. Not one who was set apart not one who was isolated, not one who was so far above them as to be unapproached, but rather one who smelled just like them. They listened to his voice and were fed and nourished. So today, as we celebrate this great feast, let us pray for that skill, that grace, that life, that calls our leadership to the fullness of listening, the fullness of life, the fullness of being connected with the people that they serve, and pray that they never take that responsibility or that grace for granted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and pray together our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As God's people, we know that the shepherd listens to our voice, so we now call out to him in prayer. For the church, that we may allow Christ to bring forth abundant life within us and guide us in using our gifts of life for God's glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a listening heart, that we, who have been called by the name, by name, may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and respond confidently to God's invitations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> For Pope Francis and all pastors, that they may faithfully imitate Christ in accompanying the people of God on their journey and encouraging their growth towards fullness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are awaiting the sacraments of initiation, that God will sustain them, help them to deepen their commitment, and grow in their desire to serve God each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work to restore life and bring healing, for medical personnel, for counselors, and for chaplains, that God will guide them as they journey with those in pain and preserve them from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of the Mother of God, the pandemic be stopped, and all those who suffer know her maternal care and protection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be with their Savior in paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For Daniel Heffern, Jane Kramer, Daniel Gerke, Bruce Van Houten, and Jean Van Huffel, our Mass Intentions, for all those listed in our Memorial Mass book, for the contributors and members of our Parish Education Endowment and Foundation, and for those prayers that we hold silently in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, continue to fill us with your spirit, to call us out of ourselves into your kingdom, and to live in service to our brothers and sisters. For we pray together in the name of Jesus the Lord. Shepherds and the 
Let us now pray that our gifts of bread and wine, that they may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, when this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all your people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, the blessed apostles, Saint Alphonsus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await with blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Church, I invite you to join with me as we pray St. Alphonsus' prayer, the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present 
in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire that you reside always in my soul. Since I cannot, at this time, receive you sacramentally, please come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself completely to you as though you were already there. Please, Lord, do not ever let me be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastors the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you this day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.